Okay. All right. So it's like a human pattern. Ah, couldn't wait. Couldn't wait for human pattern. <laughs> I will bring up this. Uh, where is that? Share the screen. Yep. Shreeman Bhagavatam. Yeah, this is a rough, rough PowerPoint I just put together in the last minute. Please excuse me, it needs to be better. We'll work on this later. But uh, Vedic literature and Shreeman Bhagavatam. All right. Okay. So in the very, very beginning, when there was nothing present, when there was nothing present, when the creation was not there yet. So who was that that was present? It's a very difficult question, but please guess. Who was that? When there was no one, there was just Somebody that was present, huh? Yes, please. Lord Krishna. Oh, thank you, Mataji. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> yeah, that's in the 10th chapter, 9th chapter of Bhagavad Gita. No, that's 10th chapter. That's where Lord Krishna uh, says, when, uh, when there was nobody present, when there was nothing present, I was the only one that was present. So that was Lord Krishna. Yeah. So the topic today is actually, we want to see, we will be talking about Srimad Bhagavatam. But before we talk about Srimad Bhagavatam, we want to see what the origin of Srimad Bhagavatam is um, and where it fits in, in the Vedic literature. So that's what we will be discussing today. If the Srimad Bhagavatam is authentic, if so, where, it, where is it that? Uh, that is fitting, that where is it fitting in the Vedic literature? Okay, so that's the topic today. Yeah, so in the very beginning, when there was nobody present, it was Lord Krishna, the absolute truth personified, supreme personality of Godhead, from which, uh, from whom everything and everyone emanates. So that's who that was present. And when Lord Krishna wanted to create the material world, what form does he expand to? You could guess. Mahavishnu. Right? Mahavishnu. And then Garbodak Sai Vishnu. And from the navel of the Garbodak Sai Vishnu, Brahma comes out. Right? Yeah. So, um, So the first living entity um, that manifested in this material world is Lord Brahma in that case, because he takes his origin. He appears from the navel of Garbodak Sai Vishnu. And in the very beginning, when Brahma takes birth, he doesn't see anything around. Everything is, everything was dark. He didn't know who he was. He didn't know what to do. So then at that time, this is in the very beginning, during the birth of Brahma, in the very beginning of the creation. During that time, Divya Saraswati, she appears and instructs Lord Brahma to do tapa, tapas. Uh, and when he does the tapas, you see this in here, there is something going on from Lord Krishna's flute to the heart of Brahma. Can you guess what that is? After Lord Brahma did tapas for a long period of time, Ved there is some... Huh? Vedas knowledge. Vedas. Right, right. Yes, yes, yes. Just, uh, yeah, Vedas, the transcendental sound, yeah, the transcendental knowledge is revealed 
in the heart of Brahma by Lord Krishna. By this, the song of the flute, but this particular sound from the flute that is entering into the heart of Brahma is Kama Gayatri. Have you ever heard that Gayatri is the mother of Vedas? Even before all these four Vedas came into existence, Gayatri is the mother of Vedas. That's where all these four Vedas came in. And in specific, this is Kama Gayatri. Kama is desire and Lord Brahma had a desire to do, do the creation. And he was looking for revelation of how to do it. And he was also looking for more information about what's beyond this material realm. So there was a desire in Brahma to know about beyond this material world and also to create this material world. So any desire is called Kama here. And that's why this is called Kama Gayatri. So this Kama Gayatri is given to Lord uh, to Brahma by Lord Krishna. This is, if you notice this, this is a revelation. So Lord Brahma is enlightened with this transcendental knowledge that uh, that uh, transcendent knowledge that came from the flute of Lord Krishna to the heart of Brahma. Kama Gayatri. Okay. And after that revelation happens, when Lord Brahma speaks, those are Vedas. Right? So the revelation is Kama Gayatri. But when the revelation is spoken in words by Lord Brahma, that is called Veda. Okay. So when Lord Brahma spoke, it was one Veda only. It's just a flow of information. Veda means the root word in Sanskrit, Vit, means knowledge. So Lord Brahma realized it and he had the revelation and that revelation is coming out in the form of words, knowledge. That is only one Veda at that time. And uh, some authorities say that is Yajur Veda. That's the first Veda. And some say it is Rig Veda since it's the oldest one. So that one Veda that was coming out from the words of Brahma was most of the times so I read it as a Yajur Veda. So I would just say it as Yajur Veda. That was the only Veda that was present in the beginning. Okay, and we will come to, uh, we will discuss about Shruti and Smriti later, okay. but we will see how this one Veda that is spoken by Brahma got divided into four Vedas. Okay. So Brahma in the very beginning, he had the transcendental knowledge revealed and he was speaking and the Vedas were coming out. The Veda knowledge was coming out. So it was passed on from Yuga after Yuga, Yuga after Yuga, from Brahma to Narada and many other Rishis. If you notice that it was just oral transmission. It was just uttered as Brahma was uttering, Narada was hearing, and Narada, after he heard, he would just understand it. And they are realized souls. They realize it. And then Narada would again talk to his uh, disciples. And his disciples would hear and they pass it on. So this knowledge that is simply heard and then passed on is called Shruti. Shruti means that which is heard. Okay. So this Veda is Shruti. And please note 
What's the origin of Shruti? Bhagwan. Bhagwan is the origin of Shruti. Right? We will see down the road. For Smriti, Bhagwan is not the origin. And that's the difference between Shruti and Smriti. Okay. So this Veda that is spoken by Brahma, which we are calling as Yajur Veda, uh, is um, passed on to different generations in different yugas. And it came till from Satya Yuga to Treta Yuga to Dvapar Yuga, right? So it came till Dvapar Yuga. And you see this Rishi here in Dvapar Yuga. This Rishi took birth. Can you guess who this Rishi is? Vedavyas. 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 Is, is Vedavyas a name? Name of this Rishi? No, Mataji. Krishna mm -hmm. is the name. Right. Vedavyas is the position. Yeah, right. Veda Vyasa is, is the position. Whoever divides the Vedas, that particular person is the Veda Vyasa for that particular Manvantara. We are in the 28th Manvantara, uh, in the 51st day of Brahma, 14 Manus, so 7th Manu, 28th Divya Yuga, that's where we are. So for us, Veda Vyasa is Krishna Dvaipayana. That's the name of our Veda Vyasa for this Mahayuga in the past Dvapar Yuga. Okay. So until then, there was just one flow of Veda that is being passed on. But Krishna Dvaipayana, he, he could foresee the future and uh, he saw, he could foresee that we will not be able to um, understand or assimilate this information of, you know, Vedas. And uh, especially just with the oral reception. That's why he put it on the, I don't say pen and paper, but the Thatipatras. That's, that's when it was put in writing, Veda Vyasa. He um, classified the single Veda into four, he compiled single Veda into four Vedas and then put it on the um, Patras. That is the greatest contribution of Krishna Dvaipayana Vyasa. Until then, it was said and was heard, but was not read. Okay. So that's Krishna Dvaipayana Vyasa. Do you know how that name came, Krishna Dvaipayana? He was born in an island. Uh, I think Dvaipayana is the name of the island. Yeah, right, yeah. And he was, the color was Krishna color, dark complexion, yeah. And parents, you know the parents, right? Satyavati and Parasaramani. Mm. Yeah. So, and what's the speciality of his birth? The moment he was born, he immediately grew. He was big, adult, and he was enlightened, and he decided to compile the Vedas. So that was a speciality of those personalities, not like ordinary birth as we have. And that's why Veda Vyasa is a literary um, Shakta Vyasa, Shakta, Shakta Vyasa avatar of Lord uh, Krishna. Uh, and uh, he then decided to compile the Vedas. So that's how he got that name, Krishna Dvaipayana Vyasa, and he's a literary incarnation. Shakta Vyasa of that. So that's Veda Vyasa. So that's our Veda Vyasa in this Mahayuga. Do you want to know the other names, the other Veda Vyasas for? We are in the 28th Mahayuga, right? What about the other 27 Veda Vyasas? Would you just want to know the names quickly? Yeah? Yes, yeah. This, we are 
and seventh Manvantara, 28th Divya Yuga, right? In the very first Divya Yuga, Lord Brahma himself, he did that. He was Vedu Vyasa. He occupied that post of doing the Vyasa of Veda, compilation of Veda, Brahma. After that was Prajapati, Shukracharya, Brispati, Surya, Mrutya, Indra. Interesting, Indra was also Vedu Vyasa at one point. Antarik Shavarani. And here, after all this, here we are. Please uh, um, ignore this numbering here. It is supposed to be 15 here. I tried to fix that 15. It took a few minutes. I gave up. That's 15, 16, 17. And here we are, 28. Krishna Dwight Pine, yes. And Ashwadhamma is going, he is going to be the next Veda Vyasa. You know Ashwadhamma is a Chiranjeeva, right? Yeah? And and do you know other Chiranjeevas that you know? That you can say? Anumanji. 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 Yeah. Parshuram, 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 yeah. That's what I heard too. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> this. But you know, Vyasa. Chiranjeeva, I, Krishna Dvaipayana Vyasa, easy. I have read that Vyasa is also Chiranjeeva, but I had my question. Is it, that's Veda Vyasa is a post. So do they mean that Krishna Dvaipayana is a Chiranjeeva? I wasn't sure about that. I read about that too. There's more, more Chiranjeeva. Mithad Hanuman, Ashwadhamma. Um, Matrachari. Missing one. There are two more. Anyway, so Ashwadhamma will be the next Veda. Krupachari. Huh? Krupachari. Uh, I probably, Mataji. I, I didn't know about that. <laughs> probably. So that's Veda Vyasa. All right. So he compiled. The one Veda into four Vedas. Okay. Now, this famous one. <laughs> Everything put together. That information is condensed, but very informative, though. Just now, Mataji, I remember the question you asked. Are these Vedangas part of Vedas too? That was the question you asked. And we'll get to that answer soon. So please note this one, Vedic scripture. It means it is coming from Bhagavan, the Kamagaya tree, right? Single Veda, this is where it is coming from. So this is a stream of Veda that is coming from the mouth of Brahma after he realized the Kamagaya tree, right? So this stream of Veda, now, Veda Vyasa is dividing into four texts or four Vedas. That's Rig Veda, Yajur Veda, Sama Veda, and other Veda. Clear. Four Vedas, right? And as we discussed in the past, if each Veda is a textbook, each textbook has four chapters. Samhitas, Brahmanakas, Aranyakas, Upanishads. The Samhitas and Brahmanas, Brahmanakas, they give more information more about material, material success. Aranyakas, they, they prepare, um, they prepare a person to go to the aranyas get detached from the material uh, attachments and get prepared to for the self realization. Upanishads are about self realization. Good. So first, what to do with material 
The third one is the transition. Fourth one is the spiritual. So if somebody is asking if Vedas is only about spiritual, now we know it's both about material, the transition and the spiritual. So each textbook of Veda has these four chapters. Samhitas, Brahmanas, Aranyakas, and Upanishads. That's Vedas, four Vedas. After compiling this information, there was Mataji, miscellaneous... Mataji, can, can you make it presentation mode, Mataji, so that it will be a little bigger? Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Presentation mode. So you can click on that slideshow, Mataji. Maybe that will keep changing. Slideshow. I... I have a yellow share button. Hello, share button. Yeah. Okay. Same. Name before sharing. Same. It is just sharing something. No, no. Next, next to the share button, it says slideshow. <laughs> I, was Sorry, I was referencing so that uh, I would follow. Is that okay? Yes, mother. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Are you able to see it well? Oh, this is so much better. Thank you, Prabhu. This is eye friendly now. Which one is currently host? Reclaiming host may disrupt break room. Breakout rooms, phones, and screen share. Uh, reclaim host or stay co host. What do I do? The recording would not be interrupted, right? I don't know. I just said reclaim host. Is it still being recorded? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yeah. Can you see it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So one stream of Veda is being compiled by Veda Vyasa into four Vedas here. If Vedas are considered as textbooks, there are four chapters in each Veda. After doing this compilation, all the miscellaneous information that is still part of this Vedas is put into this category here, you see? Puranas and Itihasas, and that's why they're called Fifth Veda. So this Puranas and Itihasas are no less when compared to this original Vedas in their authenticity. That's very important because people tend to put down these Puranas, but um, this is these are called Fifth Vedas. The Vedangas here, oh, by the way, the next one, Upavedas, like Dhanur Veda, about, about the archery, Ayurveda, about the medicine. All these Upavedas are also part of the Vedas. Please note. Okay. And Vedangas, have, Vedangas imagine this Vedangas as a toolkit. And these are all different tools here. Kalpa, Siksha, Vyakaran, Nirukta, Chandas, and Jyotish. With these tools here, we will be able to read the language of Vedas. Okay. So if Vedas are having formulas, these tools help us read the formulas. And the other example would be, if these are textbooks, then these are like alphabets. If we know the alphabets, we will understand the language of textbook like that. Okay. So those are Vedangas. This is also part of Vedas also. Okay. Like, for, like for a manual, you know, for a machine, a manual comes with it. It tells how to operate the machine, right? It comes from the manufacturer's office. Same thing here. If this is a machine, this tells us how to operate that machine. Okay. So this is all Shruti. Then what is Smriti? Smriti means which is remembered. If you remember, we just said that Shruti. What's the origin of Shruti, please? Hearing. 
origin is Bhagwan. Bhagwan, right? Now please tell me, what is the origin of Smriti? We will know, first we will see what Smriti means, then you will figure out. Smriti has information about um, the dharma and uh, different uh, procedures to do different yajnas. I'll give you a clue here. In this shastras here, which are ritual shastras, means procedural, procedural information. Look at here, Manasamhita, right? So where is this coming from? Manasamhita is coming from? Samhita is probably in the... Yeah, Samhita is compilation, but who is the personality here? Manu. Manu. Right? It mm -hmm. could be Swayambhu Manu any Manu, but remember, there are 14 Manus in each day of Brahma. So they are not coming from Bhagwan. Hmm. So Manu has compiled in order to create order in the society. He has compiled some information so he can rule the kingdom based on those rules that he has put in, like that. So these are different um, procedural information or ritualistic information or information about you know how to keep the orderliness like that so all this information this procedural information is given by an empowered personality but not bhagavan right and these empowered personalities manos or wherever they are coming from they change it with each Manvantara. So they, that information is changing. With each Manvantara, the Smriti information can change. This whole department can change. Within the day of Brahma or within the life of Brahma, this information is subjected to change, minor variations. But the information that is coming here, the Vedas, the Shruti, this information remains the same time after time. After each Manvantara, after each day of Brahma, all this information, Shruti remains the same. That's why it is said to be eternal, unchanging, Shruti. Because the origin is from Bhagavan. Smriti, the origin is from an empowered person. Yeah. Right? And the empowered personalities, they come and go. They are empowered, but they come and go. They are not everlasting. Yeah? So, uh, what does Smriti consist of? We have just seen procedural information. All right. Next one is Tantras. Hmm. How do I put it? Uh, different kind of, these are also procedures. <laughs> That's why I'm looking for a word. Different kind of pujas. Let's just do that way. A repetitive puja. So these kind of pujas, when we say puja, we think of sattvic puja coconut and flowers and incense, etc. All that puja comes under sattvic puja. And the procedure that we are following is pancharatras. Okay, that's sattvic puja. But there are different uh, rituals, yeah. Rituals, let's use that word, rituals. This is all procedural information. This is all ritualistic information. If the rituals are done in the mood of ignorance, they get, you know, like black magic, evil powers. Any ritual repeated again and again with an intention can give us some kind of power. If that rituals are done in the mode of ignorance, 
they get evil powers like black magic. If the rituals are done in the mode of passion, they get powers for material success. If the rituals are done in the mode of goodness, they get all the power of goodness. They get the power to transcend the modes. That's the beauty of the rituals in Sattvic. The rituals in ignorance and passion, they may get the power, but they are struck in this material world by the modes. They are chained to be here. But the rituals done in Sattvic mode, in mode of goodness, they give us the power to cross over the modes and enter into the spiritual realm. So the Pancharatrika Agamas, the worship that is done at the temple, the deity worship that we do, is all, they are all the rituals in the Sattvic mode. They help us to be in that mode of goodness. And it is very easy to get into transcendence from the mode of goodness. That's the power of the rituals in Sattvic mode. Okay, so this is about rituals. Again, this is Smriti. When Narada is speaking about the procedures of Sattvic rituals, that is called Narada Pancharatra. When Lord Shiva or Parvati is giving information about the rituals in, uh, in Rajasic mode, uh, those, those are in Rajasic mode. And Lord Shiva and Parvati, they gave information on rituals in Tamasic mode also. Reason why, that will be a different topic. But if you not, notice here, Lord Shiva and Mother Parvati, they are, they are somehow guiding those people who are in the mode of ignorance and passion, and they will slowly bring them to Sattvic. Ultimately, when they are ready for it, then they will bring them to Sattvic mode. But uh, those are the deities uh, that gave information about the rituals in Tamasic and Rajasic. Okay. I was listening that Parvati asked lots of questions of Lord Shiva. She, you know, when he comes out of meditation after years she bombards him with uh, many questions uh, regarding the universe and yeah uh, i was listening to some of that and it's really right. interesting right actually mother parvati she asked uh, uh, lord shiva to recite Srimad bhagavatam also actually ramayana also so there are many wonderful conversations going uh, back and forth uh, between that special couple mother parvati and lord shiva but uh, uh, they take they take these forms of Mahabhairava and Bhairavi. That is to, um, to rescue those souls who are in ignorant mode and slowly bring them to goodness. That's their speciality, Mother Parvati and Lord Bhairavi, uh, like, is that the goddess of time? or I'm, Bhairavi I'm... is ferocious form of Parvati. Oh, the, for, okay. Ferocious, okay. destructive form of Parvati, okay. like okay. Kali. Yes, for yeah. Durga Mata. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yes. Thanks. Yeah, but please note that this tantras or rituals and this uh, um, and these other shastras, they are all subjected to change. And the next part of the Smriti. Did you realize that Puranas and Itihasas are being said as Smriti, but they are actually part of this Vedic information and is called fifth Veda. Did you make that note? Is that because it's through Krishna that you're categorizing it as Shruti? Yeah, because uh, yes, the, it is the source is from the Bhagavan and it was the miscellaneous information that could not be fit in in these four textbooks. So this is a miscellaneous textbook kind of thing. 
from but this it was cabinet. also translated from a person, so I think that's why. That's why, yes. Because, that's why yeah. he's falling in this smriti. Yeah. If yeah. if so, why why we are categorizing under smriti? Then why don't we put it under shruti? Right. Exactly. That's the next. That's a good question. See if we look at Mahabharata, Ramayana. These are the itihasas. Huh? So um, the story about one single lineage. If it is about single lineage, then it is called Itihasa. If it is Surya Vamsa, that's Ramayana. If it is Shabdra Vamsa, that's Mahabharata. Story line of one lineage is Itihasas. And many um, stories of different personalities and uh, uh, things put together is in Puranas. That's the difference between these two. And why, why is it not categorized in Shruti because every time Ramayana happens, every time Mahabharata happens and different life stories of all these personalities or devotees in different Puranas, all these things are subjected to change. Hmm. That's why. But then why is it categorized as Fifth Veda? It's because of this. See, in Vedas, information, theory is present. In the fifth Veda, the life story of all those personalities who practically applied the theory is present. So in Vedas, it is said, you know, Dharma Ardha Kama Moksha, how to, how to get, how to perform religion is Dharma. By performing religion, how to get money is Ardha. By earning money or prosperity, how to fulfill your desires is Kama. Now that you have fulfilled all your desires, you're going to leave the body, you better get detached from this body and then focus on self-realization is Moksha. So Dharma, Ardha, Kama, Moksha. This is what the Vedas are talking about. Not just moksha, starting from dharma, ardha, kama, right? Yeah. So Vedas are saying, this is how you do dharma, and then ardha, then kama, and then moksha. Vedas are giving that information. And these are the people here, the kings in Mahabharata and Ramayana and Puranas, who have applied that information in their life for dharma, ardha, kama, and moksha. So if this is theory, then this is the practical here by different personalities here. That's why it's a fifth Veda because theory is lived here. But since these are subjected to change, it is part of Smriti. Yeah. 